So let's look at data validation today. Uh, what it allows you to do is to restrict the values entered into a cell. So some people, when they hear about this, they say, well, why would I want to do this? Let's look at a sample uh, down here. So in this, this area right here, uh, we've got a function in this cell. It's a financial function. I won't get into all the details. But we click in here, click in the formula bar, and it's using these three cells. So the, the way it works is that uh, the first parameter is this one. It must be a percent. The next one is just the number of payment periods. So, uh, you know, it can't be like a million. That wouldn't make any sense. And it can't be text. It must be a number. And let's just say it has to be between 1 and 500. This cell, uh, it must be less than zero because a payment is made. You're, you're putting money into the bank, so it's leaving your pocket. So it has to be a negative number. And let's say this field here has to be a comment, and then this has got to be a yes or no. So if you just uh, if you don't restrict the values entered into these cells, watch what's going to happen to the the result. If I just type in test some some text, it's already not working. It's an error. It, it can't compute it. So same if I put uh, something else in here. If I put it in a minus one million, hit enter. Uh, it's just a huge number that wouldn't make sense, right? And if down here I put in 500, all of a sudden the result is just not making sense anymore. So down here we could also just type in anything uh, or even a number thinking well, maybe the number goes down here. So either it, the answer doesn't make sense or we get some kind of strange error like that. So to prevent this from happening, uh, what you could do is use data validation and put in some rules saying this cell has to be a decimal value. So something between 0 and 1. Uh, this has to be between a certain range. This has to be less than 0. This must be text. And this must be a yes or a no. So I'll walk through and show you some of these options. So first thing is, where is data validation? Up here in the ribbon, you click on data. Over on the right, you click data validation. Once more, you click in here. And currently, it's set to any value. So there's no restrictions on uh, the cell F31, right? So this is the, the active cell down here. There's no restriction at all. So when we, in the, we're in the Settings tab here, what it says over here, Settings. When I click in here, the next thing is Whole Number. So that would be the next part here. Whole Number, we click this, and it says, between and we put the minimum and the maximum. So we'll go back to that in a minute. Uh, we've also got decimal value. We'll use that for sure later on. There's a list. This time we're going to use a list. Because in this cell here, we want it to be one of two things, a yes or a no. So the only acceptable values are going to be a list. And this could refer, when I click this, to some options. Um, in cells somewhere, but for now I'm just going to hard code it into here. A yes. The next option I put a comma, I put a no. Click OK, and suddenly here we have yes or no. The only two things that we can put in there, yes or no. If I try to type in a number, 400 enter, it says it's not valid because it can only be one of the two things in that list. So that's the first part. That covers whole. Uh, that covers list right here. Next, let's go into here, and we're going to say it must be a comment. So this has to be text. Doesn't matter what text, but any text. Data validation. We will in this case put custom, and custom means we can put a formula in here. So our formula just means let's just do this. Is text. So I say equals is text. I have to type in the active cell, which is F30, here in the name box. You can see F30. You can also see that this is highlighted column F, row 30. So it's cell F30. I will type that in here. Put another bracket to close it off. Press OK. So now, is this text? If I hit Enter, it accepts it. What if I type in a number? 55, Enter. It, no, it won't let me. So you have to only enter text, and we've used uh, the custom this time to restrict the values. Let's do this one. 
uh, the value must be less than zero. Once again, data validation. We come in here and we say whole number. Okay, we want a whole number. Actually, it doesn't have to be a whole number. Let's say this. Um, so we're going to say whole number, and in the next drop down, I will say less than. And then in this one, less than, I'll type in a zero. So as long as it's less than zero, so I click OK. Let me type in minus 500, press Enter. It's fine. What if I type in 100, which is a positive number? Once again, it will not allow us to do that. So it has to be a negative number. Uh, the same kind of thing for this cell. Uh, quickly go in here and we'll say whole number between Let's put in 1 and 500. Click the OK button. And then this one has to be a decimal value. So click data validation, decimal, minimum of 0. And the interest rate, well, hopefully it's not 100, but that's what the 1 would be. So between 0 and 1, click OK. Now if I type in 15%, enter it's fine but I can't type in anything else except for a percent so it has to be a percent going into that cell I could type in 0 decimal 1 2 enter oh that actually we, let's just go back one step so it has to be a decimal value so as long as the percent sign is there it's fine if I were to type in 12 and then I press delete to remove the percent sign and I press enter that's a normal 12 and I can't do that. So I have to type in uh, 19 with the percent sign still being there and it's fine. 8%, any percent is good. So we have covered all of these different things. This would indicate no restrictions, a whole number only between different ranges, decimal value, a list, which was down here, the yes or no. Uh, we didn't do date, but you could also have dates, times. Uh, you could even say text length, that the uh, the text length has to be a certain condition. And then custom is where you can do a whole bunch of advanced things that I like to use, and you can put formulas in there. So that's what I use a lot. Um, next part, so we've done this. And then there's also the input message and the error alert. So I'll just quickly go through and show you what we could do here. Um, Let's go to this cell right here. We know it can only be yes or no. We go back to data, data validation right there. And now I'm going to say, we're going to look at this input message and error alert, the next two tabs. So you could sort of type in something. I'll just put this is a test. I can't think of anything else. This is a test. This is the message to sort of guide users along. Or maybe I'll even do this, select yes or no only yes or no and the error alert would be um, let me see here warning yes or no please only select yes or no something simple like that I press the OK button and this little thing pops up when you select the cell that's the little input message and then if we make a mistake we're not paying attention we type in 499 enter then the error message comes up like this and that's the message that it, it tells us so quite useful if you want to remind people and re restrict the values and that are to be entered into a cell so that your data is clean and these functions still work because they're expecting certain things. You want a percent, a number, and here a negative number. This is a comment, it must be text, and this has to be yes or no.